Hello, my name is Mark Fite. I work for Internet2, I'm a core developer on Personar, and I work on Cynet on the DevOps and Measurement team. Today we're here to talk about Personar on Cynet. Most of these presentations begin with a what is slide, so this one will be no exception. So for those of you who are not familiar with what Personar is and what it can do for people with networks, let's dive right in. If you use a network or you operate one, you'll know that networks are really great right up to the point where they aren't. And when they aren't, you're having a failure. Failures tend to fall into one of two categories. The first category is hard failures, and those are pretty easy to spot because when they happen, things don't work at all. The type of things that cause hard failures are things like gross misconfiguration or an interface going down because, for example, someone pulled the fiber out of it. Now, in the latter case, those are usually really easy to spot because your network management system will alert you to it, or the device may even send out an alarm that says, hey, something went wrong. The second category of failures is soft failures, and those are difficult to deal with because when you're having a soft failure, things work, but they don't necessarily work well. The typical types of things that cause soft failures are things like devices that have buffers that are overflowing and dropping traffic, or things like dirty optics that prevent the traffic from getting through at all. Soft failures tend to be governed by packet loss, latency, and what I like to call network physics. Real physics tells us that distance brings latency. Latency slows TCP even under ideal conditions. If you look at the chart on the right, the purple line shows what happens when you put TCP traffic across a 10 gigabit per second link at varying round trip times. You'll notice that on the left, you get almost full throughput. As the round trip time increases, throughput drops off, and that's just a side effect of the way TCP works. However, even by 90 millisecond round trip times, you still have about 80% of your carrying capacity. On the other hand, if you put loss into the system, that aggravates the problem often severely, and it doesn't take much. The two lines that you see at the bottom of the chart are two real and one theoretical implementation of TCP congestion control when faced with 0.0046% loss. Now on a 10 gigabit per second link, that's about 460 kilobits per second being dropped on the floor. That doesn't sound like much when you look at how much bandwidth you have left, which is most of the link's capacity. But because TCP sees loss as congestion, it slows itself down. By the time you have more than about a 12 millisecond round trip, that loss has lost you almost 90% of your carrying capacity, and it only gets worse as the numbers get bigger. Soft failures are challenging to find, but it doesn't mean they can't be run down. Most people start by looking intra-domain. They'll look at their own network, for example. So in this case, we have a traffic path that consists of four other networks, a university network, a regional network, a national research and education network, and a network at a national laboratory. All four of these may test out just fine in isolation because their latency and loss are low enough that they don't cause problems. It's when you start doing things interdomain that it gets interesting. You might, for example, test out the university network and the regional network together, and things still might be good because the latency and loss with that pair is just fine. Add in the NREN, and all of a sudden the problem appears. Test the NREN with the national laboratory, and the problem appears again. So in this case, you have an interdomain problem. You have to work with more than one network operator, and those kind of problems require interdomain solutions. And for that, you need a set of common tools and you need cooperation. This is where Perfsonar comes in. Perfsonar is a standard tool set for measuring network performance. Any two points with Perfsonar nodes can interoperate with each other, and they'll do cooperative scheduling of measurements where needed. Perfsonar measures throughput, latency, loss, network path, and a number of other things that expands as we add more plugins to the system. Operation is 24 by 7, unattended with no humans required other than what it takes to get it installed. Personar nodes can be tasked remotely for doing ad hoc measurements, and regular scheduled testing can be done on an individual node or with several as part of a mesh. Personar's architecture has a lot of moving parts. It gets you control over what you're going to test, how you distribute those tests to the Personar nodes that are involved in your mesh, supervision of the measurements, actual making of the measurements, and then taking the results of those measurements and getting them stored and displayed for end users. Additionally, there's a lookup service where Personar nodes can be registered so that the public can see them. Once you have all this infrastructure, here's how you solve an interdomain problem with Personar. Obviously, it will start with the observation of poor performance. You'll have people at endpoints trying to transfer data and not having a good time of it. The next step is to identify the Personar nodes along the path between the endpoints. 
Once you've done that, you'll start making measurements to points across the network, starting with one end and then going to the nearest per sonar node. If that looks good, you continue measuring. If that looks good, you keep measuring to subsequent per sonar nodes until the problem reappears. At that point, you have a place to look for problems. Between those two test points may not be where the fault is, but it's at least a starting point, and it helps isolate the problem to a segment of the networks involved. By way of background, Personar has existed in various forms since about 2002. In 2014, ESNet, Jayant, Indiana University, and Internet2 formed a development partnership, which was joined by the University of Michigan in 2016. All five institutions contribute full-time development staff and other resources. Personar is 100% open source. It's released under the Apache License 2.0. There are lots of different ways you can deploy it. Personar is running on everything from single board computers to enterprise servers. What you get out of each performance-wise will obviously vary, but you do have lots of options. The system will run on CentOS, Debian, and Ubuntu on various combinations of Intel and ARM processors. The next question is, where is it used? The low-hanging fruit here would be research institutions that generate and transport large volumes of data, but Personar's origins are really with network operators. NRENs use it. In fact, there's probably not an NREN with at least one Personar node installed. Regional networks use it, universities use it, and even some K-12 school systems use it. Personar is in use by governments on the civilian and defense sides, and also in private industry. By numbers, what I like to say about Personar is that it's installed at hundreds of institutions on thousands of systems making millions of measurements every day. So, having introduced you to Personar, let's talk about how it gets used here on Cynet. In past years, Personar has been installed in three main places. First is the Network Operations Center, which is the core of the Cynet network. Second is the distributed NOCs, which aggregate traffic to and from the exhibitor booths. We had six of those at SC19. And the third place is conference services. There's a separate network for that that takes care of providing things like wireless and printing. In 2019, we had one of the vendors approach us and say, we could install Personar on our devices. And within about two hours, they had done so, and their devices were full 10 gigabit per second participants in the Personar mesh on Cynet. Some exhibitors bring Personar with them, usually the ones with 100 gigabit per second connections. We also run tests to off-site networks, which include those that provide transit and institutions where the exhibitors are sending traffic. Like most projects, we have a list of things we'd like to do in the future. Two of the things that you'll see at future conferences are Personar on a cart that can be taken to exhibitor booths for diagnostic purposes. There have also been some interesting developments in measuring wireless with Personar, and we hope to use that on our wireless network next year. On Cynet, we measure four things. First is reachability. We make sure that interfaces that we expect to be up and functioning are. We measure throughput, how fast we can get data between points on the network and off the network. We watch routing path. Even though Cynet is not what I would call a topologically complex network, it does have multiple routing options, and it's important to see how those paths change over time. Last year at SC19, we began monitoring the exhibitor booths as well. Now, this is a little redundant because there are other systems within Cynet that do this, but it was an easy add. So we were able to check whether or not the Cynet interface facing the exhibitor was up and whether or not any hosts on the exhibitor's subnets were reachable. We have lots of options for the future as well. Personar has facilities for measuring HTTP response time, so we can check and see if web services on Cynet are working and how they're performing. We can do the same for the domain name service. Additionally, there's work underway on Personar to use it to audit security policy. So at a future conference, we'll be able to see whether or not networks that should be reachable are reached or are blocked, and we'll be able to do the same thing with ports. All of the measurement results are fed to a central measurement archive. That archive feeds MADDASH and the Personar graphs package, which show grids with the network status, like the one shown at the right. It's a quick, easy way to see what the state of a particular service is on the entire network. Network operators doing ad hoc tests for troubleshooting and other diagnostics will get their results immediately. Additionally, Personar can send its results asynchronously to other Cynet systems. That's not something we're doing right now, but other parts of the Cynet team are aware that we can do this, and it might happen in the future. Something we've been doing in recent years is syndicating the Personar information to the Personar development partner booths. We've been doing it for the last couple of years with Internet2, and we hope to do it with all five at the next in-person conference. So, just to wrap up, if you'd like more information about Personar, please visit our website, www.personar.net, 
You'll find everything from information on how to get started to the source code if you want to poke around in that. If you have questions about Personar or Signet, or you'd like to get involved in Personar or Signet, please drop me a line. My address is mfight at supercomputing.org. Finally, thanks for listening, and I hope you found it informative.